Hey there, everybody. Fox 35 Storm Team Meteorologist Snow Brogan here. Hope you had a great week and Friday. Thanks for checking out our tropical update on our website, fox35orlando.com, on our apps and on our YouTube page and channel. Hopefully you subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. All right, let's get into it. Here's our tropical update for the 9th of August, 2024. And I do read your comments. At least I try to. Those of you who are on our YouTube page, and uh, I will try to be a little more fast, a little quicker with the graphics for you this time. All right, so let me give you your update where we stand so far this tropical season. We've had A, B, C, and D, Alberto, Beryl, Chris, and Debbie. Notice so far this year, multiple landfalls already on the continental U.S. Alberto and Chris went to Mexico, Beryl was in Texas, and then Debbie into uh, Florida, South Carolina, and then New England. Pretty telling for how the season is going to play out. Very 2005-esque, if you will, about how west-based that steering flow is pushing everything closer to the continental United States. Rainfall with Debbie was on par with what was forecasted. You see the track more or less here of Debbie as it came into Florida, the Carolinas, the Delmarva, Mid-Atlantic, up into the Northeast. Rain totals did not set a new state record. There was some thinking that Debbie would challenge the record from Florence in South Carolina, which was about 24 or five inches of rain, something like that from 2018. Uh, the top reports were around 18 to 20. There's a few spots unofficially in here. I just queried a few on our map, uh, but you can notice all the white is over 15 inches of rain and there was plenty of that in the Charleston area. Uh, Wilmington got over a foot of rain from Debbie. And the main reason why it wasn't more is because Debbie inhaled a lot of dry air when it was off the coast of South Carolina and didn't intensify as much again upon a second landfall as it was once thought. And the rain on Friday was every bit the part from central Pennsylvania up into New York with two to six inches of rain and lots of flash flooding. Check out the loop of the radar today from the northeast. All the light red boxes are tornado watches and all the green flash flood alerts. And there was a lot of bad flooding today in Pennsylvania and pretty clear to make out the well-defined circulation still all the way through New York and then up through Montreal and Quebec uh, seeing impacts. So another example about how it's not just about the landfall spot. Oftentimes hurricanes and tropical systems have more impact with the inland remnants than they do where they make landfall. In another case where the eastern side produced prolific tornado warnings, Barrel was like this and now Debbie. These are all the tornado warnings with the track. Remember the way the physics and meteorology works out. Generally the tornadoes occur on the east side. Can you get them on the left side? Yes, but they're pretty rare uh, just because of how the wind is going in relation to the storm motion. Remember, uh, if the storm is moving this way and the air is blowing around like this, it's that northeast quadrant with how how everything comes together, that's where the spin is greatest in thunderstorms to produce tornadoes. Plenty of warnings down in the Sarasota, Tampa area, a few in the Orlando area, one on the Space Coast uh, near Cocoa Beach. It wasn't confirmed for the Weather Service, but we might have had a tornado uh, near Cocoa Beach. You see some uh, tornado warnings in North Florida, a ton in South Carolina as Debbie did a loop, then made a landfall as a decent tropical storm, and then a tremendous amount of tornado warnings up through eastern North Carolina, up into Virginia, a couple in Pennsylvania, and then a one there in southern New York on Friday afternoon. Those ones that were out near Chicago were from a different system. All right, so now the attention turns once again into the tropics. We've got a high chance of development now in red heading towards Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. Uh, this is the tropical wave out here we're watching that's going to move to the west. Here's what you need to know. Any interest in Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic could feel some tropical impact Tuesday and Wednesday. And by tropical impact, I mean maybe a depression or a storm. Once it goes past Puerto Rico, in the Dominican Republic, whether it goes south of the islands and then north or skirts north of San Juan and north of the Dominican, at that point, it would probably be a depression or a storm. So is it a huge deal? No, but it's still it's impactful, potentially San Juan and Dominican uh, in terms of rains and some winds, but nothing extreme uh, by any stretch of the imagination for them. It's once it's past Hispaniola, that's when it probably will become a hurricane. Very confident in that possibly to probably a major hurricane, and this will get the name Ernesto. So if you have travel plans via cruise, vacation to the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos, especially the Turks and Caicos, you really want to watch this forecast close because I feel quite confident there will be a hurricane, probably a major one, 
uh, somewhere in the southwestern Atlantic the middle to end of next week. Here's our naming list. So our nurse, uh, er, Ernesto, excuse me, we're going to have next week. Then after that, it'll be Francine and Gordon. All right, the water temps did actually cool a few degrees on either side of Florida, thanks to Debbie. Uh, now that impact is pretty short because the sun, obviously, most of you know, is very powerful, especially this time of the year. So even after a storm that's slow moving like Debbie was, where it upwells the water, basically what happens is that the hurricane more or less sucks all the hot heat energy out of the ocean surface and the cooler water beneath gets moved up to the top and the cooler water goes to the ocean surface and then therefore you know the ocean surface cools so the stronger the hurricane the more of that upwelling effect the water cooled by two three ish degrees that will rebound pretty quickly in about a week or two but still temperatures are above 80 all the way almost up off the coast of south jersey uh, all of the gulf and still everywhere around the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos. So historically speaking, we are about at that time where the number of named storms and hurricanes goes up dramatically and it peaks about the second week of September. So globally, here's the global visible satellite because our satellite, technically the high res one, cuts off uh, in the eastern Atlantic. There's three tropical waves we're watching right now. This first one there is what's going to become Hurricane Ernesto next week. There's two more behind it. The second one probably will struggle to develop, but the third one that's still over Africa, once that emerges out on the Atlantic and then becomes a depression, probably towards the end of the month, we'll have to watch that one again pretty close. So here's the European ensemble. What is this? Short and sweet. Instead of polling one person, think about it like polling 50, except not like polling 50 people of the same belief, uh, you know, whether it's an opinion on something or politics or science or whatever. Instead of polling 50 of the same type of person, 50 different people of very different backgrounds, very different opinions to, to accompany, you know, account for a wide range of uh, opinions and outcomes. That's what this is in meteorology. We're taking the European model, which most of you have probably heard of, and we're tweaking it 50 different ways significantly to account for error, and we run them all concurrently, so 50 different versions of the same model, and then blend it together at the end and make an ensemble. And the mean of that is what you're looking at. And this is the plot of the likelihood of a tropical system. Uh, notice it's at 70 to 80 percent already uh, coming towards the Turks and Caicos. This would be next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, so very high odds of at this point probably would be Hurricane Ernesto, and it would track either towards Florida towards the Carolinas or out towards Bermuda. Now behind that, you see those other two waves. The middle one, uh, the ensemble, doesn't really have a lot of high probabilities, just 10%, but the one behind it, even though right now it's just 20 by the time it comes off the coast of Africa, this one towards the third and fourth week of the month, towards the end of September or August, excuse me, that one's really one I think to watch big picture. So here is our tropical wave tonight. It is pretty large west to east. Uh, it does have some pretty good thunderstorms with it. You see here a pretty big blob of convection uh, right there. But the center of this wave is still about 2,000 miles east of Puerto Rico as of Friday night. So here's the steering flow next week. Let's talk about what this thing is going to do, who needs to be worried, so on and so forth. And by the way, a couple of things. There's going to be a lot of these blobs in any given hurricane season, especially in a hyperactive one like this. So you don't need to freak out. You don't need to be worried with every single forecast blob, you know, that the color that comes out for development I showed you from the Hurricane Center. Take them with a grain of salt. Find a good trusted forecaster or source. Hopefully you watch us or uh, you've got a, a good collection of meteorologists or apps that you use. Find someone or somebody trustworthy and stick with them, but you don't need to freak out with every single blob that comes because there's going to be probably a ton more uh, this season. Now, obviously, not all of them will hit the United States directly, but many of them probably will. All right, so here's the steering flow for next week. The high that's over the Atlantic is going to actually move east. That's significant. So an east-based Atlantic high, the heat dome over the U.S. will be centered over Texas, probably over about Amarillo. Now, what does that mean for... Ernesto. Well, in between, there's a window, a window for this to track. And the question is, the trough that develops in between in the jet stream, this is the jet stream in black, what does that dip in the jet stream do? Uh, the European model takes that jet stream dip only from about Wisconsin to Washington, D.C., then out towards Nova Scotia. That flat of a trough would probably mean that Ernesto, once it develops tropical storm and hurricane, is going to be more influenced by the sh this, this ridge out here you see right here 
and just kind of recurve around the edge of that and probably miss the eastern seaboard entirely. Uh, that's one scenario. Let me show it to you here quickly. Uh, notice this is the wind on here, tropical depression or storm by Puerto Rico, Tuesday and Wednesday. Then some very large swells and surf in the Bahamas, so heads up there uh, if you've got travel plans next week. But that's a strong hurricane. Uh, this is next weekend. Now, the European model directs it away from the U.S. What's the other scenario? Well, the American model uh, says, you know what, that trough over the Midwest is going to dip a lot farther south, all the way into the Carolinas. Well, what does that do? Well, a hurricane, when it's developing, gets taller and taller, as you know, in the atmosphere. And the jet stream feels that and reaches out to it more to, to direct it across uh, differing latitudes. In this case, the jet stream is way up here and the hurricane's down here. The stronger this gets, it gets influenced more by uh, the steering currents by the jet stream. And if that trough digs as far south as that, it'll probably pull the hurricane closer to the U.S. But does that mean it goes right off of Florida's east coast, then landfall in South Carolina? Does it mean it scrapes North Carolina? Does it become an unusual, they are overdue, granted. It's been a very long time since New England's gotten a direct hurricane. As a Connecticut native, I can speak to you about that for a long time, but we'll leave that conversation for another day. Does this become a rare hurricane hit for New England? Does it scrape New England and landfall in Nova Scotia? All would be possible, but in terms of a Florida impact, Given this dome of high pressure that Florida kind of sits on the edge of in this trough here, it would be pretty unlikely for this to go right into Florida's east coast and be a huge direct hurricane landfall to Florida. Could that change? Yes, and I'm certainly not going to rule out that changing. What would have to change? Well, this trough would have to be different. The ridge would have to move further west. It, it's, it's just not a setup meteorologically to get a hurricane and hit Florida's east coast. You would actually need the opposite of this. You would need the high pressure over New England to direct a hurricane into Florida's east coast. So while I won't rule it out, it's pretty unlikely, at least at this point, that that would go right into Florida's east coast at the end of next week into the weekend. It might come close, though. Bears watching. But Carolinas is partially up to New England, Nova Scotia. Eastern Canada should watch close. I'll show you that visually. This graphic with the uh, GFS, that's the American model, Notice it goes across Puerto Rico, starts to strengthen, and then it's a lot closer to the Bahamas. Uh, this would be a hurricane impact to parts of the Bahamas, and it's pretty close to the Space Coast, not that far away, is a major hurricane. Kind of shades of Dorian. I'm not saying this is Dorian 2.0, number in 2017, where we had a Category 5 sitting right off the coast of Florida that scraped by the coast and didn't really hit us much. Uh, but more kind of similar, strong hurricane that looks like it's coming towards the coast and then turns at the last minute. So that's what we will watch as we head into next week. Keep it here. We'll have updates for you all weekend and heading into next week. I'll see you back here on Monday. But for right now, I appreciate you watching us here online and on our YouTube channel. And uh, keep it in tune to the weather because if you have plans in any of these places next week, Hurricane Ernesto will be a thing to keep tabs on. Have a great weekend.